Michael Bennett is a lot of things. He can rush the passer, he can defend the run, and he's even a pretty good dancer. For the Seahawks, Carroll lined him up all over the defensive line. His versatility and his effort is what makes him so valuable to this team. In this defense, his role is defined by down and distance. Typically on first and second downs, Bennett plays as an edge rusher opposite of Cliff Averill. On third down and other obvious pass rush situations, he slides inside as a three-tech when the Seahawks want to bring in their NASCAR package. This group usually consists of Michael Bennett, Cliff Averill, Frank Clark, and sometimes Cassius Marsh. Next season, my assumption is that Malik McDowell will play in these packages as well. As a pass rusher, Bennett is not the fastest, nor is he a dominant edge rusher like Vaughn Miller or Cleo Mack. He does, however, have enough moves to get by an offensive lineman. Here versus the Cardinals, he uses a club swim move, which is one of his favorites when he wants to take the inside path of the blocker. In this play, the Seahawks overload the left side of the offensive line. KJ Wright blitzes through the B-gap as Jaron Reed occupies the left guard. Bennett lines up inside the tight end and takes two steps up the field before stuttering to the outside. This is what gets the left tackle to lunge, allowing Bennett to swipe away his hands and swim past him to get into the backfield. In addition to his club swim, he has enough power in order to collapse the pocket as an edge rusher. Versus the Falcons, he lines up as a wide nine outside the tight ends. Both of them release, giving Bennett a one-on-one -on -one matchup versus Jake Matthews. Bennett takes three steps up the field and then fakes hard to his left before attacking the edge of the pocket. Instead of rounding the corner, Bennett converts a speed rush to a bull rush, placing his inside hand on Matthews' chest plate while using his outside hand to stop any counter punches from Matthews. I paused the video here in order to illustrate what Bennett's initial steps created. He's in a great position as Matthews is off balance and is completely leaning forward with poor leverage. Bennett then lowers his hips and drives him backwards into Matt Ryan for the sack. Earlier in the season, Bennett lines up as a five tech sitting on the left ear hole of Jake Matthews. He stutters forward and then uses his outside hand to swipe away Matthews punch. This allows him to rip underneath and destroy the quarterback in under two seconds. Luckily for the Falcons, they have Julio Jones who burns Richard Sherman on a slant route. If Sherman didn't fall for Julio's fake, there's a good chance this play would have been a sack. While Bennett does have some moves that he relies on, there are times when he stalls since he takes too many steps attempting to set up his pass rush. In this play versus the Lions, Bennett rushes as a wide nine end and then takes six steps setting up his bull rush. Anytime he takes more than four or five before initial contact, there is a good probability that his pass rush will fail. Now, Bennett does trip forward, but honestly, the bigger issue in my opinion is that he doesn't rush hard up the field in order to set up his move like he did before. Here's another example in the same game where Bennett stays too vertical while he takes too many steps and doesn't threaten the offensive tackle in either direction. This is the reason why the blocker can counter and wash him out of the play. After studying the Seahawks film a fair bit, a common question that I seem to get a lot is why can't the Seahawks get interior pressure? Some of this definitely has to do with personnel. While Reed and Rubin are good run stuffers, they aren't adept at rushing the passer. Both of them play on first and second downs, which is why the team relies on Averill, Clark, and Bennett to get pressure on these early downs. The other reason is because the Seahawks defensive line plays a lot of contain and they like to do a lot of four-man stunts. For some of these plays, especially on third down, like here versus the Cardinals in week seven, Bennett was used as an interior looper as the edge rushers float around the outside of the pocket. These are longer developing plays and they require the Seahawks secondary to play sound coverage. Normally, this isn't an issue, but once Earl Thomas went down last year, this definitely took a toll on the team. Here's another example in the playoffs where Bennett loops around the entire pocket, starting at the weak side A gap before finishing in the strong side C gap. By scheme design, Bennett is completely removed from the play. For this stunt to work, Bennett has to draw the center while Frank Clark clears the right guard in order to get Cliff Averill free. Since the center did not fall for the bait, Averill's tackle and stunt was stopped in its tracks. Next season, when the Seahawks have Malik McDowell, they can definitely be more dangerous and these four-man stunts will have a higher chance of working. All right, well, that's it for this one. In my next week's Seahawks video, I'm gonna finish my breakdown of Michael Bennett. 
He is one of the best run defenders in the entire NFL, and it honestly felt like that deserved its own video. But before that, on Friday, I'm going to look at Alshon Jeffrey and see how he fits in the Eagles' offense. As always, you can support my work on my Patreon account, and you can follow me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.